Erectile dysfunction is a condition that used to be called impotence and it goes by a variety of definitions but I think the practical definition is that if a man can't get an erection hard enough or long enough to have sex that effectively is erectile dysfunction. It's a very common condition. 20% of men over the age of 40, that is one in five, and by the age of 70, two thirds of men have got some degree of erectile dysfunction. 10 to 15% of them total erectile dysfunction, they just can't get an erection at all. It is underreported, probably about a third of men only even mention it to their doctors, so there's a lot of men suffering with erectile dysfunction who suffer in silence, don't either want to talk about it or don't know there are treatments available. The other important issue with erectile dysfunction is it's not just about sexual function. We now understand that there's an association between erectile dysfunction and other diseases. Diabetic men, for instance, are more likely to get erectile dysfunction. If they do, it suggests they're also more likely to get other vascular conditions, blood flow conditions like heart disease. Even men who don't have diabetes, if they get erectile dysfunction, it's now regarded as an early indicator that something's happening to the blood supply to the penis and blood supply to other parts of the body may be affected later on. And there are some very good studies that show that if you get erectile dysfunction, you've got a 50% chance of having a cardiac event within the next eight years. And this is really poorly understood by GPs and certainly by the public. And as urologists treating erectile dysfunction, one of the things we're trying to educate people about is this strong association between erectile dysfunction and the development of other serious conditions. Erectile dysfunction is caused by a variety of things. To get a normal erection, the central control mechanism, the brain has to work correctly. The nerves down to the penis have to work correctly the blood supply in the penis has to work and the penis itself has to be normal. So if any of those things are abnormal you'll have erection issues. If for instance somebody's had a stroke or they have Parkinson's disease or they have multiple sclerosis, all things that might affect the brain or the nervous system, they can have erection problems. If they're very depressed or very anxious and there's excretion of brain chemicals associated with those conditions, that can affect erections. If they've had damage to the nerve supply in their spine from trauma, if they've had damage to the nerve supply in the pelvis, which commonly happens with cancer surgery, particularly prostate cancer surgery, then the nerve messages don't get through. The biggest group, however, really have vascular disease, that is the blood supply into the penis is affected. And that goes along with men who smoke, who have high blood pressure, high cholesterol, overweight, diabetics. All the things that we know are risk factors for cardiac disease are also risk factors for erectile dysfunction. So the things men can do to prevent getting erectile dysfunction are to really address those risk factors and as, uh, have them treated as best they can. There's a variety of things we can do about erectile dysfunction, but one thing people I think sometimes are surprised about is what investigations we can do. Generally it's a diagnosis you make from the patient's history, that is you talk to the patient, they tell you the problem, you ask some specific questions that indicate to you what might be going on, and you examine the patient looking for conditions that might cause it. The one thing we sometimes find when we examine the penis is a condition called Peyronie's disease, which is a scar tissue build up in the penis and that can be associated with erectile dysfunction. But the diagnosis is usually made from the patient history. And then we do a number of investigations. We measure their serum testosterone, that is the hormone level in the bloodstream. We check they're not diabetic. We make sure their cholesterol is being controlled. So we try and address all those other areas before we move on to specific treatments.